again, uh, the race has finally started, um, and it appears that our problem lies with uh, one of our members. That whenever he is in the room, the room does not start. And here's the other problem. Oh, look at that. Great on board shot. PM10 absolutely wiping out for Adam. Who's was that? He just wipes out. TJ by the looks of things. Um, not good. Very not good. I'm uh, going to jump back out and jump back in because it's not allowing me to spectate properly. Here we go. What an absolute crock of shit this has been. So, therein lies the problem. Uh, we had the same issues yesterday and uh, it was it was Nick in the room. So I don't know if there's something wrong with his PlayStation that causes the lobbies to, to go. I don't know. I can't tell you. Um, but we've, we've got to the bottom of the problem. Um, but I'm going to reiterate what I said in the last video, which I'm actually going to delete, uh, because no point having a video with nothing happening on it. Uh, but we need to get this shit together. We're getting the lobby sorted on time. Um, so if we've got problems, we deal with them at 8 o'clock and not at fucking 9 o'clock. Um, simple as. So if you're in a race, lobby's open at 8 o'clock, get in a fucking room, make sure you're in and signed in and ticked in, and then it works. And then uh, if you want to go fuck off for half hour, you can do but uh, I think we're going to need to be a little bit militant on, on that aspect alone and just say, look, if you're racing, get in the room so we can check it actually works with you in it. Um, right, anyway, to the racing. Uh, GMAC in the lead, and he's already 3.3 seconds clear. Uh, he's gone for you to start on the racing softs. <laughs> Avalon in second, also on the softs. They're, 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 he's, uh, or the, both of them, are on the focus. Uh, Stormfly, a bold, bold, bold choice in third, 1.2 seconds back. Um, he's in the phenomenal, phenomenal Audi Quattro. I um, love this car um, so much, even though it's probably not suited to my crappy driving style. But Frowley looking very, very racy in that bright yellow RCZ with a massive wing and that huge scooping spoon on the front. Um, they are 3.7 seconds up from Jay. Jay, Jay doing, I'll tell you what, Jay has been quick all day in these rally cars. Um, he must be rubbing his hands together for this tournament. Um, and then uh, crying really realizes he's got to go back to work in a couple of weeks. So he's never going to race, get to race the whole series. But anyway, J49 in fifth place. PM10 Racing in sixth. Um, he was quick, he was quickest in practice, um, but couldn't replicate it in qualifying. Finds himself Danny Order, and he loses out there to Star Group. Star Group goes up into sixth, relegates PM10 Racing down into seventh place. Um, as he puts it, a purple sector as well. Uh, TJ in eighth, a uh, bit coming together early on. Is there another coming together there? Through the chicane depth, everyone through relatively safely. Um, Aussie through as well. Grizz Troopers, as we just see him in the distance, just clipping that wall, coming out of the chicane of death. He is 4.1 seconds behind. We are on lap two. This is a 60 minute endurance race. Uh, they start on half a tank of fuel. The, it doesn't burn very quick, it only burns times one. Um, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna run out quickly, but the tires will. The tires are on times four, and you've gotta use all three compounds. Um, is anyone gonna go early on to the harder compounds and get them out of the way? Or are people gonna lead them to the end? That'll be interesting to see if people like run just one or two laps on those harder compounds. Um, it's GMAC out in the lead, 3.9 seconds. GMAC's absolutely got this dialed in. Um, this uh, forward focus, he's got it dialed into a T. Absolutely brilliant performance from him. Um, all day actually through, through practice, um, good through qualifying and uh, now very solid in the race. But is he peaking too early and taking too much out of these tyres? Because um, if we look at Avalon behind, Avalon's in the uh, same car, but uh, a lot less wear on the tyres. Um, Stormfly in third. He is the highest non-Ford runner. Um, in fact, the, two, the only two, or three, there's three cars on the track that aren't Fords, and uh, they're running third, fourth, and... Um, Where's the, where is it, where is Aussie? And ninth at the moment. So two of the top five are not Ford Focuses. That's uh, so a Frowley, oh, we're saying Frowley doing a great job there. Clips the chicane of death, absolutely melts it into both walls. And he catches Jay, and he uh, slows down TJ. Um, Aussie Rooster catches up. He did also, I think, catch PM10 on his way through. 
uh, PM10 really struggling. Um, had a few little knocks here and there, uh, but that's going to be the nature of the racing with uh, GRB. The, it's it's going to be the cars are sliding for a reason, as we say. We see and no, loads of smoke coming out of Franny's car there as he locks up those wheels. Smoke galore from Aussie Rooster as well. Has he got some damage on the front of that car? Certainly doesn't look like it, but there was some smoke coming out of that. So all change apart from the front three. G Mac uh, 3.2. The gap has come down to ahead of Avalon, who's 6.9. <coughs> 6 6.9 clear of Stargroup, who's made his way up to third. Uh, Stormfly clearly off the track. You can see there, Stormfly really, really slow there. Like he's dropped right back into fourth place. Um, so where we had, uh, yeah, I know, brilliant, wasn't it? Five car smashing there. Um, Nick, I'm a little bit worried, buddy, that it might, it might be your connection, because we had the same issue yesterday, and you were in the room yesterday as well. So I don't know what the suggestion is, but I think what we need to do is do some sort of um, test, but before the race is supposed to start, not 10 minutes after. Um, but I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put something on Discord later um, as to how we deal with that issue and not coming up again, because we've got you know, some big events coming up and we don't really wanna be doing this every single time because it's sapping the fun out of it. Um, so Stormfly back in fourth, PM10 racing, three seconds behind. He's now pulled away from um, that uh, that sort of battle behind. Um, it, it may not be down to speed. It may be something corrupted within the console itself um, or the game itself. Um, I, I, I don't know the answer in all honesty, Nick. I don't know, uh, but I will um, endeavor to find out. So first in the pits is GMAC. Uh, he did take a lot out of those tyres early on with, with jumping forward as he did. Um, and we see Avalon going out in the lead now. And he's 6.7 seconds clear. Looked after his tyres so much better. Um, Stargroot is uh, in second now. And he's pulled that gap of 1.2 on Stormfly. Is that because of the tyres? Well, not really. The tyres are very similar. So, I, I mean, that was going to be my worry on this um, Audi Quattro. It was going to be really bad on tyres. But it hasn't actually been much worse than the Focus. Um, how's everyone else doing? PM10, he's also doing very well on the tyres. Um, comfortably for three seconds behind. Not putting too much out. Um, not putting too much out on the... Uh, in, in terms of pace at the moment, but uh, is looking after his tyres a bit better. Um, I can't set up a party now because I've already started the, uh, the stream with that, Nick, but we'll do it um, next time out. And if we'll do it for tomorrow's racing, it's on. But we'll certainly, we'll do it for the team versus team if you want. Um, TJ, there he is in fifth. A uh, bit more out of tyres for him. He's another three seconds back. And he's under some pressure from G Mac, who's just come out of the pits. Uh, and G Mac has opted to go and get the mediums out of the way. So early doors getting those mediums on the board and out of the way. Didn't have to worry about putting any fuel on. Um, I wonder if anyone's going to bother fueling, to be honest. But there we go. So there is G Mac in uh, the, he was leader. He has pitted it and he was the first in by some significant way. Avalon jumps into the pits uh, on lap five. So you, you, you so basically you're getting five laps out of those soft tires. So I can't see these guys running soft for much of this race. Um, and there we go, so Avalon peels off. Uh, Star Group stays out for another lap. Uh, Stormfly also out for another lap. Stormfly has got that gap right down now, putting some pressure on, and their tyres both, both looking a little bit angry, but certainly got enough grip to stay on the track. Uh, There's half a second difference between these two, and it's the Audi versus the Focus. Uh, PM10, now four seconds back, but staying out on track. Um, GMAC up into fourth. Um, the gap is 3.7 seconds, so he will regain the lead when these guys uh, come in for their pit stop. He currently has the fastest lap with a 1.420. Uh, no one else is even close. BM10, 1.430. He's a second slower. Uh, 1.426, six tenths slower for Stormfly. Uh, Stargroot, a 42.1. So Stargroot, the only man on the track putting out those times as we see uh Stormfly put the car in first and then lose out on the old switcheroo so the car make the move stick star group gives up the, the the first part of the corner to gain in the second part of the corner and finds himself back in the lead 
but and not getting it all his own way. Stormfly is putting significant pressure on the back of that car now. Are they going to come in or, or do they feel their tyres have still got enough on to stay out for another lap? Um, now, the early pitters went in lap five, uh, lap four, uh, or one went in lap four. Uh, they're staggering in their Stormfly in. Uh, what's PM10 going to do? PM10, he's staying out for another lap. Now, is that a masterstroke or is it foolish? He's clearly got a game plan. He feels his tyres are strong enough to cope. So he's staying out on those tyres. Going longer here actually will benefit you further on in the race. Because if you can, the longer you can stretch it out, essentially what you want to be doing is you want to be doing a two stop um, and, and stretching the length of the tyres out. So, you know, 10 minutes into the race here, he gets rid of the softs, puts on maybe the hards, goes quite long, leaving him um, sort of 15 minutes on the uh, medium tyres towards the end. Maybe that's the plan. Maybe maybe, maybe that's not a, a good plan at all. He's got something else planned. Who knows? Uh, but PM10 in the lead. He will lose that lead, however, to GMAC when he comes in. So GMAC is back pretty much in the lead. He's in second now, uh, but he has pitted. Frowny. Frowny hasn't pitted either. He's currently running in third. Um, again, staying out a bit longer on those tyres, I think will benefit these guys later on in the race. It will just give them a little bit more grip on the on the on the crappier tyres um, as they go deeper into this one hour endurance. There's Stogger, he's back out. He's opted to go for the softs again. Interesting tactic. He's clearly decided to go racy racy. He knows he hasn't got to worry about fuel, so he is going absolutely balls to the floor on those softs and giving another stint. He still has to run the other two compounds, um, but um, different strategy interesting strategy uh, Stormfly straight in with the hards so he's going to drop off the pace of Stargroup for a bit um, but he's got one of the two or two now of the mandatory three tyres out of the way um, and certainly the least the least acceptable one of the three being the hard tyre as we see PM10 go in uh, interesting to see what tyres he's putting on now, it would be nice in these things you could see what compound's going on we'll have a look here now straight back out again and he's gone for the medium tyres so everybody else seems to be going the conventional route of getting some of the tyres out of the way and we're at Franny Franny's gone for the hards so very different tactics um, across the board a lot of people have opted to get those um, hards out of the way Aussie Rooster and Stargroot have both come back out on softs so they're planning on uh, improving their track position there, uh, where everybody else is thinking more about the long term, these guys are thinking, look, I can, I can go X amount of time on these tyres. I can do this amount on this one, this amount on that one. I want to be, I want to stay racing on the softs and see how far into the race I can get before I have to put the mandatory tyres on. Um, it could come back and bite them because the, the problem is going to be is that once everybody else has run the mandatory hards and the mediums, if they stop again, they've got the softs as an option. Um, and I'm not saying that these guys don't, but they're going to have to do one more stop in order to make that soft at the end of the race an option. So we are we're looking at very different strategies. Um, it'd be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, but at the moment, GMAC absolutely dominant in this car, um, dominating this racetrack, dominant in the class, dominant in this car and it will take it will take some phenomenal driving from behind him to, to get close he's seven seconds clear um, he's on the mandatory medium and uh, cruising and he's still I mean he can go another another ten laps before he even has to start thinking about fuel um, and that will put him easily into uh, the second half of the race so um, a full tank of fuel will actually take you to the end uh, but because they know they've got to stop again, it's silly to, to make the car heavier. Um, so Stargroup there, seven seconds clear of Stormfly. We know Stormfly is running on the hard tyres. Um, again, he's, he's going to have another 10 laps before he needs to... Well, actually, I mean, the hard tyres will take those 10 laps. So actually, that the, the downside to putting the softs on is the tyres will probably go off before you need fuel. Um, whether, whether you just fuel anyway, or you uh, got another game pad, I don't know. Um, but the gap to Stormfly has closed. PM10 on those mediums looking quite racy, actually. Um, 46, 
four in his last lap, um, which is not bad for uh, the different tyres. But um, he's he sort of out of sync track position wise. He had a, a few comings together early doors. There were a few uh, track incidents, and it, it it kind of threw him out of kilter. And obviously, not qualifying first on the grid um, would have thrown him out a little bit as well. Um, so Avalon there in fifth place. He was an early front runner, early leader. Um, he has chosen to go for the medium tyres, so he's set, going to be setting into a nice little rhythm of um, chucking out some laps. I know he's chucking out some decent times. Um, he's only a couple of the fastest lap. He's only a couple of tenths off that of Stargrove, who's the fastest man on the track at the moment, with a 1.49, uh, a 1.41.9, should I say? Um, that's a that's a bloody quick time actually. Um, and I think he's the only one to go sub 1.42 at the moment. Uh, there's TJ. Uh, can't do better than 43-1. Uh, back in fifth. But he is past PM10 Racing. Um, so, all change there. Avalon now up to fourth. Uh, TJ Dad's a fifth. PM10 Racing down to sixth place. So, all change there after a little bit of uh, shenanigan. Uh, there's Frowdy in seventh. Went quite long. Gone for the hards. Um, has quite depleted the fuel though. I mean, he, he can go. He can go for the full stretch before having to refuel. Now, um, is he going to do the full ten laps on these hard tires? Is he going to stay on the hard tires after he refuels? That will be interesting. Um, so, what we're ten laps in. So another ten laps takes us just past the midway point. So half a tank does half a race. How's about that then? Uh, Aussie Rooster in eighth place at the moment. He is eight seconds behind Frowny, but 28 seconds ahead uh, of Jay. He opted to go for the racing softs again. Um, is he going to pay off for him? He's not really closing that gap on Frowny. In terms of lap times, it's not really improved his lap times either. So, a bit concerning uh, on the sort of lap times he's going to be able to churn out on the hards and the mediums in this Hyundai. Clearly not getting the performance out of the... Uh, uh, the Genesis that uh, everyone else is getting out of the uh, other cars. What do you see, Gordon? Uh, there is Jay in the focus. He was showing some great pace in um, early practice and and sort of early, early, early sort of practice racing and the practice sessions. Um, now finds himself 30 odd seconds adrift um, of uh, Aussie Rooster. He is on hard tyres. Um, it looks to me like he's actually put some fuel on board as well. So, this could actually be a bit of a masterstroke from Jay because it looks like he's fueled to go longer than anybody else here. He, if he can make the tyres last, he can hang it out there. Oh, he's not going to go fast if he keeps clipping it there, though. A chicane of death. Um, if he can look after these tyres, he can hang that car out there to the 45 minute mark, um, which will mean he's going in significantly later than everybody else. And, uh, might be able to close that gap up a little bit but he is the 34 seconds down the road and uh spinning the car like that is not going to help him it's any there we go back on the road car reset there we go uh that gap to Chris troopers now is nothing Chris troopers great exit out there is he going to be able to make a make a move here on jay jay's got into the pits he's getting rid of those hard tires he does not like them He's done, he's done a mandatory stint on them. Um, can't say fairer than that. Grizz Troop is now up into ninth place. He's also running the racing hard tyres. Uh, what's Jay going to come out on? Is he going to fuel to the end? Why has the car stopped? Hopefully Jay is not rage quitting here. That would be... Uh, a devastating disappointment. A very devastating disappointment. I know he's back out. He's on the mediums. Um, I don't know what happened there. It looked like he was a bit buggy. Um, who else was in the pits then? It looked to me, though... Who was it? It was GMAC. GMAC went into the pits again. He's now on the racing hard tyres. Um, interesting ploy. <coughs> so he's decided to get the mandatory tyres out of the way. Um, very interesting. Because he was only in on lap, I suppose, lap five. 
Yeah. So those mediums didn't don't last very long at all. So Star Group way out, way out in front now. 14 seconds clear of uh, Stormfly, and he's running those racing softs. Um, so he's pulling out that gap. At the moment, that's a couple of seconds a lap. As we see Avalon uh, on the faster tyres here, on the mediums, putting a challenge out the back of Stormfly. Stormfly opting to go long with the racing hard tyres. Um, it's, it's a, under braking, that car really dips into the ground. Great little, um, great shot there. I mean, that's a great shot there, the helicopter following them. Um, Why? Well, there's a shot from the helicopter. There we go. That is the shot I was looking for. Uh, Stormfly just touches that wall, coming into the chicane of death. Um, can Avalon close up on him? He's certainly getting closer. That's the view from the car of Avalon. He's got, um, he's got Stormfly on his sights. He's on the quicker tyres. Can he close up? Can he get a better exit here and use a bit of slipstream, maybe? just to get a bit closer I mean, he's, he's going to be getting a little bit of toe um, but the I mean, optimum toe is going to be within sort of three quarters of a second he's not going to be getting much that far back although that massive massive wing on that Audi is probably uh, hiding a lot of the air to be fair and sucking uh, that Ford Focus along on the track again a lot closer now though um, GMAC back 3.5 seconds back from this battle at the moment uh, not the, they're still not pit window clear, but they're on tyres that can go a lot, lot longer. So GMAC, um, despite his early pace, is taking a lot out of his tyres and costing himself time. Um, which, which you know, when you go in the pits, it takes a lot. It's a lot of time in the pits, and with refueling at one litre a second, um, you want to you want to maximise every bit of time you can. And it's Avalon not quite close enough to make a move at the bottom of the hill here. But that, that's a great shot from inside the car, I've got to be fair. Um, can he get closer? Uh, we're getting to the chicane of death. Stormfly, how far behind is he? Still 13.6 behind Stargroup. Stargroup absolutely melting it up the road at the moment. So we see Avalon coming in, they're coming into this tricky section. Both through the chicane safely. The gap is opening up, um, and GMAC is closing fast. So much pace. So maybe he's going to offset the need to a bit more often. We're just out and out pace. Uh, he's certainly the quickest, one of the quickest men out there. Um, Stargroup with a 41-2 is the man to beat, though. Um, so the early pace from... Um, what, what, what is GMAC's quickest time? It's actually not on there anymore, but uh, I, think, I think it was a low, it was a very low 42. Stargroup now 13. Oh, what is Jordan again? 13.5 seconds clear. Um, I imagine we'll probably see him pit here. We pit lap seven. Um, so I think we'll see him pit again here with the softs. Now, we are 25. By the time he pits, we're going to be 25 minutes into this race, um, which is just under half distance. Is he going to whack on uh, one of the mandatory, uh, of the other mandatory tyres now um, in the soft or the medium? Oh, sorry, the hard or the medium. Or is he going to go for another steam for the soft while he's got low um, low fuel? Uh, right, well, Jay is... Uh, thanks for asking. Me. Jay is 31 seconds back. He's actually picked twice. He's already put the... Uh, yeah, Freddy, I knew Freddie was going to go in. His tyres were struggling. So Jay's put the hard tyres on. Um, wasn't doing too well on them, so he's opted for the mediums and has stuck in fuel that may get him to the end of this race. So um, he's playing the long game. Uh, Grizz uh, came out after his first stop on the hards. He is 32 seconds up the road from Jay, but he's got a pit. So um, that 32 seconds will be gone when he pits because a pit, the pit here, especially with one litre a second fueling, is about 25 minutes. Um, you go in the pits, you basically need to book into a hotel. Um, 14 seconds up to Freddy. Freddy's daddy's second pit stop now, uh, running on the mediums. So, everyone looking to get rid of those hards pretty quickly. Um, Aussie Rooster, he has, um, he did a, he's done a second, this is, uh, third stint now. So he's done a, he did a stint on the, two stints on the softs. He's now running the medium at mandatory tyre. Um, Stargrew into the pits. Again, he's going for the softs. So he's, He's clearly decided 
Um, while the car is light, with less fuel to go racing. So is he going to do another seven laps on these? Um, that will take him out to, um, what are we looking at? Another 12 and a half minutes there or thereabouts. So we'll be looking at to the 30, 38 minute mark, 37, 38 minute mark. Interesting ploy. And then uh, still on the hard to still on the soft maybe. We will see what we will see. But he comes back out in fourth place. Stormfly has pitted again. No, he hasn't. I lied. He hasn't pitted again. He is still on the hards. So he has only pitted once. He's on the hard tyres. He's 2.4. That's 2.4 seconds clear of Avalon, who had who came out on the mediums. Um, and those mediums don't seem to last uh, much longer than the softs do. So actually, I think with the mediums, the amount of grip you're sacrificing um, doesn't really justify the extra couple of seconds uh, or the the extra couple of laps you gain because I don't think you go you're not you're certainly not gaining any time and you're only gaining um, they are getting ready you can see how far back they're getting ready for that chicane I think it's because the cars are so slippy going through there particularly when they're not on the soft tyres um, but yeah I don't, I don't think there's much gain to be had with uh, with the running the medium tyres as long as possible um, because they, they just don't run that much further than the softs. You're better off running it for a set amount of time and bang, getting the softs back on and uh, and, and, and putting in some, some, some lap times. But Avalon seems to be doing quite a good job of holding on to them though, given that. GMAC back around. Um, he's not far off the back of Avalon now. Certainly looking to close in, but Stargroup's not letting him pull away. Stargroup is only uh, 0.1 behind him. And he, remember, he's on the soft tyres. So he's absolutely going hell for leather to beat him on the road. Um, and I think his strategy requires it because he's on the soft tyres and he still has to run the mandatory hards and the mandatory mediums. He needs to get past GMAC to make this strategy work. GMAC is already on the hards. GMAC has already run the soft. He's also run the mediums. So from now on, he can do whatever tyre he likes. He hasn't got to worry about mandatory choices. He can go for the hard, the uh, the, the quicker tyre. And we see the GMAC just dropping out there. Um, now they are scary, but he seems to hold it to a quite well, Nick. Um, so Stoggart, is he going to make a move on Avalon? Very brave to make a move there. That's the craziest part of the track to be trying to make a move. They're all for the chicane safely though. Stargroup on a massive charge. GMAC just can't keep up with him at the moment. Um, Stargroup with the fastest lap as well. That, I mean, through the chicane, that, that is absolute massive balls going through that chicane of death. So close to like that. I would back the fuck out. I would not I even dare do it. Um, Avalon pulls into the pits to get rid of those angry red mediums. So there we go. Two laps additional running time to lose a second a lap. Not worth it for me. But no, that was some awesome racing. Um, I think I'm gonna, uh, that is going to be a little real, I think, uh, going through there, those three. Uh, so PM10 promoted him to much on him, actually. Right to fourth place. He's still running those mediums. Um, opted to come out on the mediums. Done a really good job, actually, of holding those tyres together. Really good job. Um, certainly shouldn't be counting him out at this stage. Uh, he's 13 seconds back from the front three. Um, but he's still, he, he's still only pitted once. So he's running a bit longer than everybody else. Um, I, th I think I think we can we we can look forward to some interesting strategy from him, and because we know he's got the pace, uh, so I think he's he's, he's going opting for slow and steady wins the race here. Um, so Stormfly, has he pulled away? Well, no, he hasn't. I mean, Stargroup is so quick at the moment, Stormfly just can't, and his fuel is out. He's made it pretty much the halfway point. This is the point at which Stormfly is going to need to uh, put some fuel in the car. So I'm pretty sure. Um, I, He's going to ditch those hard tyres and fill his tank halfway. <laughs> or maybe only fill it, he, he might only fill it a quarter. Because it's one litre a second, I think it's worth um, doing it all in one stop than fire around with the splash and dash. Because at one litre a second, there's no such thing as splash and dash. They will do is see Stormfly pull over to all. Oh! And Stargroup goes through, gets his Stormfly's way. Stormfly has had to stay there. Has he had to stay out? I think he had, I think he's been kind of forced into making the decision to stay out uh, because he was just so far on the left hand side 
and uh, couldn't risk cutting the pit line to uh, to get through. But he is back up in the lead and doing a really good job of uh, holding Storff, uh, Starkery at bay. But um, I don't know how long you can hold him off. Starkery is absolutely throwing this car around this track. Um, I don't know who pissed him off, but he's driving angry and he's doing a bloody good job of it. Um, GMAC starting to catch up to this battle now, um, but he's going to have to pit as well. He's already had to pit twice. Uh, this will be his third pit stop. Yeah, there was a, a, a little bump, yeah. I don't, I don't think it's intentional. I think it was rubbing his racing, but um, but it meant he couldn't cut across without getting a three-second penalty. So Stargroup does go through into the lead. Can he pull a big enough gap? Um, he's got enough fuel for certainly, uh, certainly one. Oh, looked like a little touch there from Stormfly. Um, a little, maybe a little thank you for for keeping him out of the pits and forcing a, a fuel-saving nightmare. But he's managed to do it. Not a lot of fuel left in that tank, though. I would love to see what. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely racing against them. These two, these two just wouldn't do it. G Mac in uh, in his exuberance to catch up to these two racing has clipped the wall, um, and that drops him 3.4 seconds back. Although he does still have 15 seconds on uh, PM10 in fourth place. Seen too many DRE tags in this lobby. I'm going to change that. Uh, no, I'm not, because I've been talking about it anyway. So there's GMAC in second place now. A storm flyer storms into the pits. Uh, this time without uh, being hindered by um, Star Groot. He's built up a gap of 4.9 seconds. Um, is he going to go balls out and come in this lap? Is he going to fuel save a little bit and stay out a little bit longer? Uh, we're on lap 19. Now, we know he can probably take these tyres... Um, where can he take them to? So he did sort of seven laps, did 14 laps, so another seven laps. He could take them to lap 21 um, if he's got the fuel to do so. So is he going to get two more laps? So the gap between Avalon and TJ is 6.7 seconds at the moment. Uh, three point nothing to PM10. Um, but we haven't seen much of TJ. He's been sort of quietly knocking around in midfield there. Um, is ahead of Stormfly at the moment. When Stormfly comes out of pits, we'll get an indication of um, how quickly TJ's going to get caught. He's on the racing softs. Um, is his choice now going to be... He's going to have to come in now as well. He's going to have to change those tyres as well because they are looking pissed off. Um, so he's going to have to change those tyres. Lovely big scratch down the side of his motor there. Um, loving a bit of visible damage. Um, it's going to bode well for the GR3 actually. So the, the new GR3 European tournament has light damage on. So don't crash your freaking cars, boys. Crash your cars, you may find you're in a pit for a long time. So no change out front. Star Group seven. Seven seconds clear. Um, stays out again. GMAC in the pits for a third time. Um, he loves a pit stop as a GMAC. Uh, very quick, very, very quick. Um, without question. But very hard on his fuel and tyres. So he's in. Star Groot is 24. That's right, you read it here, folks. 24 seconds clear. Um, can do. He can do another lap after this if the pace is there um, with the fuel remaining. Um, we certainly know he can get the tyres to last that long. Um, if it were me, I'd probably be coming in now. But uh, who knows? Avalon, 24 seconds back. Um, he's not long out of the pits on those hard tyres. So he's going to be able to run a little bit longer. He's, he hasn't put all the fuel he needs in, but he has put some. And that will certainly help him run um, certainly towards lap. Where are we? Lap 20. 30 minutes in. He can probably run another 10 laps um, before he has to start thinking about it. Yeah, that, that nice relaxing bath before the race clearly is the answer um, maybe he was doing the uh, the track math so TJ in the pits changing out those um, those soft tyres for the racing hards so GMAC 21 seconds 
behind Avalon, who is 23 behind Stargrove. So actually Stargrove, he's got a fuel, so he may not have enough. But he stayed out, he stayed out for one more lap. So I called it, he's done three stints of seven laps on those softs. Uh, he's still gonna run the hards, he's still gotta run the mediums. Does he? There are two. There are two options. It's to run a full stint on the hards and, and a full stint on the mediums and finish the race, or you run the hards for a couple of laps, bin them, stick the mediums on, run them for a reasonable amount of time, and then whack on some super softs or whack on some softs for uh, for the last sort of five or six laps to have a have a little have a little pop. But I think that decision's got to be made. Um, early, because if you make the decision too late, you're going to find yourself losing time on crappy tyres. Um, but I think it really depends on where he comes out after this pit stop. And I think he'll come out on the hard tyres and get them out of the way first. Because we know those mediums will only give you a couple more laps. Um, with, with, with the way he's been tyre saving, maybe he'll get 10 laps out of them. Um, we see he gets seven out of the soft, he might get, I think it's nine or ten max out of the mediums. So uh, let's see what happens there. Let's, let's have a look down the order. I've um, been neglecting these guys a little bit. <laughs> but Jay's on a bit of a, um, a bit of a, a strategy. He's, he, he's not got to worry about fueling now. He's got the difficult fueling out of the way. He's a minute back from TJ in eighth. He's 21 seconds up from Chris Troopers. Um, although that gap is about to come down as he goes skidding off into the wall. He binned those hard tyres early doors, did not like them in the slightest. He's now on some very, very angry looking mediums, um, which uh, are not keeping him on the road. I imagine we'll see him get rid of those. Uh, as we see blue flags coming out for uh, Jay, who's that coming behind him? Blue flags out very early to be fair, if I can't see him, it's not really interfering. I think they need to think about when these blue flags actually come out. And that's PM10 coming through. Um, but he gets out of the way, PM10 is through in fourth. Uh, midfield, what's Frowny up to? Frowny on the medium tyres. Um, looking quite comfortable there in sixth at the moment. Uh, Aussie Rooster four seconds back. He's made up a place from eighth. Um, he was another that, uh, that ran two stints on the soft sandy doors. Um, is he going to be able to close off on Frowney? Don't know. Frowney at the moment seems to be pretty comfortable there in the midfield. Uh, Stormflight currently in fifth place. Uh, now running his stint on the mediums. Um, he's fueled his car to the end. Um, it's just needy. He, he's not going to get these tyres to the end. These tyres will only do nine or ten laps. We know this. Um, so he is going to have an opportunity actually to put some softs on later on and uh, have a little pop at the guys out in front. Uh, PM10 running now in those racing yards uh, and running pretty comfortably in fourth place. Um, pretty solid lap times. He's uh, of 142.9. If he did that on the hards, that's faster than anything he did on any other tyre. Um, GMAC early leader ran away with it, absolutely ran away with qualifying um, and uh, ran away with this race early on. But um, it's come, come a cropper to uh, the need to pit stop more. Um, had to come in really early, two laps before anybody else, um, or was it no, one lap before anybody else, but two laps before, um, before the front runners. And uh, now finds himself 70, well, he's 15, 14 seconds up from PM10. Um, he's on faster tyres and we know he's quick. He's got a fuel again, um, but also so has BM10. He can't go to the end with the fuel left in that car. Uh, Avalon uh, will also need to fuel again, but he's on the hard tyres. Um, he doesn't need to replace them uh, if he doesn't want to, but I think he's probably planning to at some stage. Um, Stargroup, uh, he's gone to lap 23. So I said he could stretch it out to lap 21. He has stretched this field out and these tyres out to lap 23. Um, the tyres are looking horrible and he's on fumes. Um, he's got to come in now, absolutely got to come in now. There's just no two ways about it. So here we go. 
Stargrew will go into the pits. 24 seconds clear of Avalon, um, who is 16 seconds clear of uh, GMAC. Now, is GMAC going to be able to regain the lead here? Um, I certainly think so. I think with the low refueling speed uh, and the need, and the need for Stargrew to refuel, the, obviously the question is how much fuel is he going to put in? So he's coming in the pits now. Uh, they're clearly waiting for him. Um, we all know he's just coming to pits and he will be there by now. But uh, there we go. And there he is, he's in. So, quick tire stop. No fuck ups there. How much fuel? It's not showing the refuel. Why is it not showing the refuel? Stupid. Well, I'd say he's out. He hasn't put very much fuel in at all. Um, he's now running the mandatory mediums. So he's put enough fuel to take him until he needs to change the tyres again. He is going to go. No, no, no. You don't need to go full tank. It's half tank start. And on these. Um, and these guys have taken uh, half the race to deplete that half tank. It's only on times one. So I only need to go to half tank maximum at this this stage not even that far but Stargrew played quite a clever one so he's clearly planning on picking again for some soft tyres um, and GMAC did not regain that, that position from Stargrew GMAC is still in third place so Avalon did get the lead uh, 13 seconds clear uh, GMAC is 2.4 seconds beyond Stargrew so if Stargrew can get these uh, racing medium tyres warmed up um, GMAC behind him, he's on the softs, but he's going to have to pit sooner. He's got less fuel and he's got less on those tyres. So if he can keep GMAC behind him, uh, this is poised for actually a masterstroke in tactics. Uh, and maybe he should go and work for Ferrari with tactics like that. Uh, yeah, Stormfly is closing down on PM10. Um, Stormfly on the mediums, PM10 on the hards. And Stormfly was an early front runner, I remember. He's uh, he's pretty darn quick, but he's selling into a sort of a, a mid-race pace. <laughs> it's very difficult actually to see where these guys are. Excuse me. In terms of the top three at the moment, um, so, so TJ, yeah, TJ's daddy in eighth place. Yeah, he, he, uh, he lost that to Aussie a while ago. To be fair, but he's obviously lost it again through the, the pit stops. But yeah, no, I'm looking at these two, and they, I mean, these two, um, on paper, they should be top three. Absolutely, in terms of pace. Um, in fact, any of the top five could win this race. Um, but it's difficult to tell, because everyone's opted for different strategies, just where these guys fall. I mean, in terms of pace, there's not much different. Or, well, I said there's not much difference. There's two seconds man, between Stormfly and BM10. Um, but they are, one is on medium, one is on hards. But in terms of like pace of GMAC, um, Stargrew and Avalon, it's all very similar pace. Um, and we know Stargrew can pull out blistering times if he needs to. So, what about back as a teacher? We saw that Tej had lost uh, eighth place to Aussie Rooster. Um, quite some way as well, 3.1 seconds. Um, they're not getting involved in that battle with Stormfly anytime soon. 38 seconds off the back of that battle. Um, they've got a whole different race going on. Um, Frowny, three second pit penalty. That pit penalty is a right bugger, isn't it? Um, he has fueled and, uh, and tired himself to the end. He will not need to pit again. Um, just needs to look after that side a little bit in the early stages. Um, but. Uh, with 15 minutes remaining pretty much uh, 15 minutes at uh, 146 a lap we're looking at 10 laps there or thereabouts 11 laps maybe um, then we go back to Grizz Troopers who is so far back he's not even giving me a split time um, it's almost a lap so Grizz Troopers is nearly lapped by everybody on the track bar Jay and Jay is 44 seconds behind. So that early strategy he seemed to have of fueling to the end of the race um, hasn't really worked out for him pace-wise. 
because we know he had some blistering pace actually in uh, in these qualifying session uh, and the practice session. Um, really quite good pace, but it just doesn't seem to have been translated into race pace. Uh, and possibly it could be that with the practice, you're not you're not quite pushing as hard, or you know you're not you're not aiming at another place. Um, but yeah, it's not. Um, it's not great, but yeah, I mean, he had to... Yeah, yeah you're right, Nick. He's had some great laps, to be fair. He's put in some decent lap times. Um, and he's got 146.8 on lap 23, which, uh, in terms of back marker pace, is pretty good. If you consider that, Chris Troopers is, uh, is the f anywhere between 47.4 right up to 52.4. Um, so it looks like the issue is more about consistency. And uh, Chris Troopers... I thought he was challenging Aussie Rooster there, but obviously Aussie has just lapped him. Well, you say that, but I don't think they do if you move over in the right place. You know, you do have to come off the racing line, but um, what you do is you you slow down in the right there, and, you know, if 9th and 10th are going to have blue flags for the same people. Um, I think the, the issue these guys have had at the back is things like that, is... Um, I know he needs to get out of the way for him, but they, you pull over to the other side of the track, just let off the throttle a little bit, um, keep the momentum and just let them sail through on the racing line. Um, but also the blue flags are quite deceptive because you can see the blue flags waiting there, right? There's Grizz Troopers, there's Frowdy. Frowdy's not gonna get past him just yet. He's, he's, he's not close enough. So. You, I think the blue flags need to be a little bit more... Well, I, mean, I suppose you can look at your radar as well. Um, you know how close they are by looking at your radar. But I think the blue flags need to come out at a more opportune moment. So maybe maybe there's a, a different system to signal they are right on your ass, get out of the way. Not start telling you to get out of the way when a car is five seconds behind you. Um, like, for instance, there. Yeah, see, it comes far too soon. I mean, I, I've got a problem with, you, with, you, with, it, with it letting you know but it should be like a flashing blue to let you know there's a car coming. Um, but then also you can just look at your radar and look at your mirrors. So um, there is that. So out front, well, it is changed because Avalon is out in the lead, uh, but he's about to come in the pits. There we go. So that's going to change straight away. Star Groot, uh he's running those mandatory mediums um, and he's run them as far as he's prepared to go for a couple of laps. He is just about to lap J. Um, he's back in 10th for, I think, the second time. Well, it must be, because um, they've been lapped by people back to 6th. So, Stargrove is going to come in the, this, maybe next lap, lap 30, uh, get rid of those medium tyres, and then um, and then they'll have a, a couple of minutes on the hards. Uh, it depends on gap. So, 25 seconds it was to Stormfly, uh, or is it? Is Avalon coming out in second place? So close. Oh, that was so close. Stormfly does go through into second, um, but the margins were so small. You know, a litre of fuel less, and Avalon is coming out in second. So, <laughs> he's been brave, actually. I don't, I, I think he, he, he can make that fuel last, but um, I think he's taken as little as he possibly could. And he's, he's on the soft as well. So he's going to have a go, but he does need to be aware of uh, the, the fuel. Uh, I think if you're, if you're unsure, then go a little bit more, and then at least you can go racing. Um, but he is, he's not letting Stormfly pull away. But bear in mind, the Stormfly is on used mediums. Um, he can go to the end. He's much faster, but he's not got a lot of fuel. He's got to be really careful. Um, Stormfly's got plenty of fuel to the end of the race. I think Avalon's undercooked it and he's going to have to fuel save a lot. Um, if he can't get past Stormfly soon, he, he's going to have to back off. Um, unless he's relying on Slipstream for several laps to save some fuel. But he does go through. That was a very, very bold move. To, to go for that straight after the chicane of death takes massive, big, brass, huge, gangly balls. Um, that was, for me so far, the move of the race. Um, he knew he was going for that and absolutely.
absolutely melted it. Um, now, can he settle into a fuel-saving rhythm um, that keeps him ahead of um, Stormfly? Well, Stormfly's actually gone in the pits. So, Stormfly said, sod this, I don't need fuel. But what I do want is some racing tyres. And here we go, he's going to come out, he's on the softs. He's got the fuel to go now, he's in fifth. How far can AK win in the pits? So, he's got six seconds to make up. Six seconds on GMAC. Uh, GMAC on the softs uh, with a little bit less fuel. So he's going to be racing, he does have a penalty. Um, PM10, further six seconds on the road. He's on the hards, he can go to the end, but he's on the hards, he's not going to be that racing. Um, Avalon, he's on the softs. He's in second, 26 seconds behind start group um, with a dribble, a dribble of fuel in that car. Um, he's still got to race for another nine minutes. So we're looking at another five laps with that dribble of fuel. Um, now, if we consider that uh, the halfway point in this race was, I've forgotten now, 15 laps. So a core, you're looking at seven and a half laps. I think he's going to be tight. I know that he can do it for me. I know that he can fuel save with that little bit to the end. I mean, we're, oh, so I'll say that, it's already gone red. And he's got to do four laps. Um, did he push too hard? Is he going to go in for a little dribble now? Now that Stormfly's gone in. It does actually change it a little bit. I think had he known Stormfly was going in, uh, he may have stayed in the pits for longer. Uh, but there's always the one that did Stormfly go in because he got overtaken and because he wasn't that racing. Very interesting to, because to, he didn't have to. I mean, Stormfly probably could have stayed out on those tyres and carried on going, but clearly he didn't feel the pace was good enough to do that. Um, quick look at Star Group. Star Group absolutely got this dialed in. He does need to put on the hard tyre. Um, he'll come in now, put that on, and he'll do the last few laps on the hard tyre. Um, 26 second gap. Um, Avalon also probably got to come in. I don't know, I don't, I don't he, he, he can't, he can't possibly. He cannot, I've, I've said it before, but I genuinely think this time he can't do it. He can't do it on that fuel. He pushed too hard early doors with it. If he feels safe from the start, maybe. So PM10 up into third. He can go to the end, or can he? I think he feels just, if he's fuel saving, he can go to the end. But he's got GMAC on a charge behind him, um, under a second, and GMAC's traveling rapidly uh if we look i mean poor lap from paul there 1485 from pm10 racing um to g max 143 exactly zero 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 so he is putting in a whoopity time um stormfly on a charge now um is he going to get fastest lap uh which was set by stargro way 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 back in the first stint uh, 141 so um, you can see Stormfly is absolutely whipping that car around the track like he doesn't own it um, smashing it 5, 6 and 7 um, well 5 is Stormfly um, who's absolutely going to charge up towards GMAC uh, for only 31 seconds behind um, should be able to get I think the gap's big enough to teach nine seconds that he could well I say that he could feel the same his way around but that gap's going to come down a lot faster if he keeps clipping that wall um, but he's not going to catch Stormfly uh, Teach is what nine seconds behind Frowny he's on the softs he's got it do you know what it's possible with the time left there's six minutes so that's three and a half four laps four laps uh, Teach is doing 142.1 Thrown into 143.1, but he's got a safe fuel now, and he's on the mediums. <coughs> I think if TJ sees what we see, he knows he can push and have a pop of that. Um, it's whether he takes the risk. Uh, 26 seconds back to Ozzy. Um, Ozzy went for the same strategy as uh, Star Group with the um, with, with the leaving the compulsory tires towards the end. And it hasn't worked out as well for him as it seems to work for Stargo. Uh, Grizz Troop is 1 minute 39 seconds back from Aussie. Um, and Jay has closed that gap 
to 14 seconds. Now, they're both on medium tyres. They're both on the focus. Grizz Troopers has got to fuel safe. Jay doesn't, but his tyres are his tyres up to the job. Now, that will be interesting. Avalon in the lead as Stargroot in second. He's on the hard tyres, and he didn't fuel at all. So he's looking to take it to the end on those hard tyres. Avalon looking to take it to the end on those soft tyres with significantly less fuel. Um, PM10, 10, 10 seconds. He's on hard tyres. He hasn't got the fuel. But he's in third at the moment. Um, yes, Dogger had to pit because he hadn't run the um, hard tyres. He had to do it. So he's just come out. Um, but he didn't put any fuel on which I think is a bit mental. Um, here's the thing. So Stargrew and GMAC on a massive charge, um, both on softs, although St uh, Stargrew, sorry, Stormfly. Stormfly on a massive charge with GMAC. A um, bit more fuel than Stormfly, less fuel saving from him, and the tyres in better condition. Um, they've got four minutes, four and a half minutes left. So lap 34, I think, is where this race is going to finish for these two. They've got to get two laps of balls out racing. G-Max tyres are fucked. There's no, there's no two ways about it. Um, those front tyres are going to be causing no end of problems. Um, not the same to be said for Stormfly. He has got tyres to burn. He's got fuel to burn. And that gap to PM10 Racing is already down to under three seconds. He did a 1.41.8. Yeah, G-Max fronts are gone. Absolutely ruined, yeah. Uh, but he hasn't got a lot of fuel either, so he's going to have to back off. Um, but yeah, so PM10 Racing did a 143.1. A 141.8 from Stallfly. That gap is closing fast. Um, you can see how close it is. Third, fourth and fifth, really close together. 12 seconds up the road is Stargroot. He is 1.9 behind Avalon. Um, how's he doing for fuel? Well, he's, uh, Stargroot's on the hard tyre, so he's not going to have as much grip. But he hasn't got bit, and he has got a bit more fuel to burn. And there's a back marker involved. Um, Chris Troopers is currently having a say in his championship. He moves over, Avalon through, and straight away he's going to have uh, Stargroot on his ass looking to get through. Now he is at the moment being chased down at a rate of knots by, um, by Jay. So he is not in a position where he could be giving up any time at the moment. Uh, Jay is now only 5.6 seconds back, um, but his tyres are gone. Can he hold those tyres on long enough to close that gap? Grizz Troopers, less fuel, similar problem with tyres. That's going to make for an interesting race. Uh, but the two gaps I want to look at, this gap here, it is down to 1.7 seconds. GMAC now just getting dropped like a stone off a very tall building. Stormfires just said, you can stay back there with your shitty red tyres. I'm off, and Loffy has gone in that phenomenal Audi Quattro. Uh, yeah, no, he did. He did a really good job there because he, he knew he was still racing. It's now 1.5 seconds. Look at this. If I'm PM10, this is what I'm looking at. Oh, hang on. Where is PM10? I can't do it. I can't look in my rearview mirror. How freaking ridiculous is that? So there is Stormfly's view from the front of his car. He's 1.4 seconds back. Chasing down third place. Is a podium on the cards here. Um, who would have thought when pitting so close to the end and being down, and you know, dropping de deliberately out of the top three um, into fifth place to uh, now charging down PM10 for a podium place. PM10 is in trouble here. Um, not a lot of fuel left. This should be his last lap. Uh, but where are these guys? Where's Avalon and Star Group? They're a bit further down the road. This will be the last lap. It's 1.5 is the gap here. Oh, no, the pressure is massively on PM10. Um, he's on a hard size and he's got Stormfly absolutely bearing down on him. Uh, and with a bit of slipstream as well. Can he hold him off? The fact we're on the last lap might be the saving grace here. So, 
Avalon in the lead, 1.4 seconds clear. He's made that fuel work. But look, I mean, it's, is he going to run out before the end? He's slowing. He's slowing down. Is he slowing down just for the corner? Or has he got no fuel left? It looks to me that he's lost fuel. Stargrew is through. Stargrew is through to take the win. And the very last corner, as you see Avalon runs out of fuel, just trying to fend off the charge. What an absolute massive result for Stargrew. Last corner to take the result there. As Avalon crosses the line, PM10 does get through. Stormfly in fourth. He holds off Stormfly. Um, GMAC. Nothing left on those tyres. Absolutely nothing left. He does get across the line in fifth. Um, Frowny some 40 seconds back. Here he goes. Frowny is coming through. Very slowly, but he's coming through. Tej has overtaken him. Tej has overtaken Frowny. Um, there was me thinking that he was miles back, but he wasn't. Um, penalty to serve. Frowny back through. As Tej got the pace, neither of them have got a huge amount of fuel, but it looks like Frowney's run out of fuel as well. So TJ gets through into sixth place. So many overtakes on that last corner. As Frowney limps home, running out of fuel on the last lap. What a phenomenal. Do you know what? It's been, I don't, I don't care what anyone says about any of the races we've done or anything we will do again. This for me has been an absolutely fabulous competition, fabulous race. And I'm um, really sorry you weren't with us, uh, Tom, because you've come up with an absolute doozy of a tournament here. And uh, wow, just fucking wow, what a race. So there's your winner, um, Wiggy, as his nickname is, Star Groot, uh, is the winner. And what a strategy that was to, um, to win the race as he did. Um, absolutely phenomenal performance. Um, saving that replay for posterity um great race what what can you say so there we are we are finishing a little bit later than advertised um but we are through this race finally um your winner is a uh, star group senior taking it on the line from avalon um just for me a couple of liters under field um, would have won that race, but for those couple of leaders, I think. I think it could have been it, 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 that push to get past Stormfly. Um, w w I think cost him, cost him those, those those extra couple of yards in lappage. Um, Stormfly doesn't manage to break the top three. PM10 holds out in the uh, on the hard tyres for third. Stormfly was in fourth place. Um, what can you say? Great. Great performance from everybody. Um, Franny came home in... Uh, Franny didn't come home in fifth. What am I talking about? Um, GMAC came home in fifth place. Not much left on his tyres. Um, another last-minute overtake for Teach come home in sixth. Uh, seventh was Franny. Uh, and uh, everyone else was behind them. as was Aussie. Then... Um, Chris Troopers and Jay. Uh, so, there we go. It's over. Um, I've been Urban Pirate. This has been a phenomenal race from uh, Black Flag E-Racing. Um, I hope you join us again soon on uh, Black Flag Racing TV. Um, but for now, I am out. It's been emotional. <laughs>